So you have created a cool shader effect. You export your game build on the targeted platform and you get potato FPS. What will you do? You watch this video. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Digvijay C. Gohil and today we will talk about shader optimization. This is not a platform specific video so whatever I'm going to say will apply to Godot, Unreal, Unity and other game engines. So how can we optimize the shader? Let's say you have created a visual shader using nodes. That graph will translate to HLSL or GLSL or other shading language code based on the engine. Now I hear some of you say that but Digvijay, I don't use visual editor to make shaders, I write them. Well, I heard you all and in that case, you're directly here. But that will not affect your shader performance whatsoever. Okay, now the shader code will be compiled to assembly instructions. These instructions will tell the GPU or graphics card how to render the pixels on the screen. It does that by communicating to the graphics driver. Okay, that is simple enough to understand. Now to optimize the shader, we need to cut down this assembly instructions as much as we can. Why? Because in almost all graphics APIs like OpenGL, DirectX or Vulkan, API commands require a certain amount of validation to make sure that the GPU is in correct state. Even the commands that seem simple enough can lead to a flurry of behind the scenes housekeeping. Therefore, the goal is to reduce these instructions to bare minimum. Alright, now we have a general idea of what to do. But the question is, how we identify which shader needs optimization? Well, hard truth of life is, technically every shader that we write needs to be optimized. But in general terms, there are basically two ways to identify which shader to optimize. First, based on the number of nodes or instructions, we can go and see each shader and look at the number of nodes it has or if it is written the number of instructions it has. The shaders with more instructions are the ones we need to optimize. Some engines like Unreal also provides a shader complexity view mode that tells us which shader is to optimize. The green ones are fine but the ones that are on the reddish side are slightly expensive and as the shader goes to the whitish side needs to be tweaked. But this way is not very accurate because it only takes into account the number of instructions but not all instructions are equal. The second way is to just test the shader in question on targeted platform. This is more cumbersome approach we need to export the build, install it on the targeted platform and see how it performs. But this approach is the most accurate. Alright, now that we know how to identify the shaders to optimize, let's dig into some examples. Okay, I am in visual shader editor in Godot and have the shader which has 1, 2 and 3 add operations and a total of 5 nodes. If I hit the show code button, we have some 31 lines of instructions. Now let's say we have this shader with one UV node and one power node and a total of three nodes. Let's hit show code and this one only has 21 lines of instructions. So which shader is more expensive? By the instruction count one can say that the example A is relatively more expensive. But here is the catch. Not all shader instructions are made equal. Example A only has simple add operations. And while example B has less instructions, it is performing a power operation, which is slightly expensive than the addition. So example B is more expensive despite having fewer instructions. And this is why shader optimization is hard. We actively need to be aware that not all shader instructions are equal. Now let's dive into a real example. Alright, I am in shader graph in Unity and I have a shader 
that is basically clipping my game object from up and forward axis all right it has one two three four and five nodes excluding the master node now let's see how we can cut down the instructions here i'm performing two step operations this one for the y axis and this one for the z axis i can probably combine them in only single step node so let's first delete these nodes Let's take vertical and horizontal steps and combine them. Vertical step in Y axis and horizontal step in Z axis. Let's take our position and feed it into step node. Take our combined nodes vector 3 and feed it into the edge. Then split our step node and multiply our Y with our Z. Hit save and it should work just fine as before. And now here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 nodes as well. But these split and combine operations are very cheap compared to the step node. So this is slightly performant approach than the earlier version. Okay, so that's one way to cut down the instructions. Now let's go to another example. Okay, so I am in the material editor in Unreal Engine where I have a PBR shader that is just sampling some textures for rusty metal. Now this one doesn't involve mats and at first glance it only has very few nodes. But again, we need to keep in mind that not every shader instructions are made equal. Here we are sampling some textures. And sampling a texture is an expensive task. Basically for every pixel, our shader is reading a texture based on the UV. Based on that UV, it finds the texel and then picks the color of that texel. And here we are sampling multiple textures, which is not very efficient. So how can we optimize this? Well, we can't do anything to albedo because it is a color and transparency data. We can't do anything to normal map either because it packs normal vector information, X, Y and Z components in RGB channels. But this metallic, specular, roughness and occlusion map are just a grayscale texture and they only need single channel. So what we can do is combine those maps by storing each one of them in different channels using any image manipulation program. I have created this combined map MSRO which has metallic on R channel, specular on G, roughness on B and occlusion on alpha channel. Let's sample this texture instead and take the R channel output and feed it into metallic G into specular B into roughness and alpha into occlusion and we can effectively delete these textures and we have made the shader more performant to further improve the performance we can cut down the size of the textures itself. But at that point we are trading quality or fidelity for performance. Now you might have heard the traditional saying that avoid loops and conditional statements in shaders to improve performance. Which in my opinion is a naive advice. It's like saying clamp your shader code to 50 lines. Which is not feasible at all. The better advice should be to try to reduce the number of iterations and conditional statements where possible. Okay, let's dive into the final example of the day. In Godot, here I have a star field shader that I have written on the previous video. And I have for loop here. And here in the star layer, I have nested loops. Now I can't do anything here these loops are absolute necessity for the effect. But in the sky processor, I can cut these iterations. 
This doesn't mean to remove the loop entirely because then I need to write these instructions multiple times which is not convenient at all and it won't help our cause whatsoever. By cutting down the iterations, I meant that we are iterating for let's say 10 times. I can get away by iterating for only 3 times. And this is cheaper than 10 iterations, relatively speaking. Now I also have this conditional statement that rotates the bottom part of our skybox. Let me think how can I cut this out by some maths. Maybe... Okay, so this i direction dot y goes from minus 1 to 1. And we only want to rotate the bottom part. So... Let me get here where we are rotating 170 degrees. Let's multiply it with i direction dot y. And let's multiply it with 0.5. So this can only go from minus 0.5 to 0.5. And then take the ceiling of that. Ceiling will return 0 for negative values and 1 for positive values here. But basically, it just rounds the number up to the nearest integer. Now I'm getting an error that I'm multiplying int with float. So let's make 170 float. And now we have desired output. But here this thing returns 1 for top part. So our top UVs are rotating 170 degrees. And for the bottom part, this will return 0. So 170 into 0, 0. So no rotation in bottom part. However, we were rotating the bottom part originally. So just to make it identical, I will invert the i direction dot y. And we have successfully cut the conditional statement using maths. Nice. Now I'm on the 4K display. So if I were to run this shader full screen, I have 3840 pixels horizontally and 2160 pixels vertically. So all of the shader instructions will execute for 8,294,400 times per frame. Damn, GPUs really deserve some respect. Okay, so now that we have cut as much instructions as we possibly can from our shader, we export the build on targeted platform and it still tanks the FPS. Now what? Well, at that point, we have to sacrifice visual fidelity or in simple terms, trade the quality of our shader for the performance. So if I would be struggling to get decent FPS, then I need to reduce the complexity of my shader here. The quickest way to do that is to reduce the resolution. So let's go at the top of our shader and say render mode use half res pass. This line will allow our shader to write and access the half resolution pass. Then in our sky processor we can go if add half res pass then put the entire thing in if statement. So now I am performing stars calculations for every fourth pixel. So in my case, instead of 4K, I'm only doing all this for 1080p. Then in else, let's say color equals half res color dot RGB. So at full resolution, we are taking the color that we have written in the half res pass and passing it to our color. And you can see that the stars slightly get pixelated. We sacrificed the quality for performance and instantly made our shader 4 times faster. Previously we were performing star calculations for 8,294,400 times per frame. We cut that by 4 times. So now we are only performing the calculations for 2 million and 73,600 times per frame. That's quite an improvement in my eyes. We can also use quarter res pass. 
so in the render mode say use quarter as pass and if say at quarter as pass and here say quarter as color so now we are calculating for every 8 pixel so instead of 4k we are rendering the stars at around 480p so we have made our shader two times faster than before and total eight times faster now we are only performing star calculations for 1,036,800 times per frame. But our stars are fairly pixelated now. These are some trade-offs that we have to make to gain some performance. Finally, we can also use various precision to cut down the calculation cost. For example, right now this floats are using 32 bit for the calculations I can specify medium P so this will use half precision or 16 bit float precision low P will use 8 bit float precision so these are few pointers on shader optimization and let the truth be told that one can only optimize shaders by knowing how the shaders are rendering stuff, like what is happening behind the scenes. There are no shortcuts here, only practice, practice and practice. And that's pretty much the video. If you find the video helpful, click the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Wishlist Cosmic Roads on Steam. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.